Good morning. I'm Kevin Decatos, a research zoologist in the Department of Vertebrate Zoology. I've been here since 1991 working on the evolution of reptiles and the theory of systematic biology. And today I'm going to tell you about work that I've been doing involving naming the tree of life. One of the grand challenges of the Smithsonian is understanding and sustaining a biodiverse planet. And ever since Darwin, biologists have considered evolution the engine of biodiversity. As a result, they've adopted the model of a branching tree for analyzing and interpreting their data. However, although tree-based approaches are now widespread in biology, there's at least one major area in which they're not widely used. Biological nomenclature is the discipline concerned with the names of groups of living things. And in modern biology, those groups are species, separately evolving lineages, and clades, groups of species united by common descent. Biologists give names to the various clades and species to organize our knowledge about the diversity of life and to facilitate communication about it. The problem is that the current name governing system is outdated and out of sync with an evolutionary worldview. That system is outdated because it's based on the familiar taxonomic ranks. These ranks are not necessarily a problem in and of themselves. They work well for indicating the nesting of groups within groups. The problem is that the ranks later took on a function in the rules governing scientific names. In a nutshell, the ranks were implicitly incorporated into the definitions of scientific names, an example of which is shown at the bottom here. Now, these rank-based definitions work OK for species names for reasons that I don't have time to describe. They don't, however, work well for clade names. And the reason is that clades form nested series. And this is why the traditional definition employs a taxonomic rank, which is needed to specify to which of the many nested clades the name should be applied. Because names are defined in terms of rank, they can change their associations with clades as a result of simple changes in rank. That is, even when the composition of the clades remains unchanged. In this example, the same two clades, one composed of species A, B, and C, and the other composed only of B and C, are considered under two different ranking schemes. On the left, the smaller clade is ranked as a family. On the right, the larger one. And, and this is a subjective decision. Because the name in this example is defined as the taxon that's ranked as a family and contains species C, that name shifts from one clade to the other depending on which ranking scheme is adopted. Moreover, when ideas about relationships change, ranks often need to be adjusted, and the result can be a cascade of unnecessary name changes. Here's a real example. Um, traditionally, the cockroaches, Blatodia or Blatteria, and the termites, Isoptera, have been considered to form mutually exclusive groups, which was reflected in their traditional treatment as separate orders, as shown in the taxonomy on the left. However, more recent evidence, illustrated in the tree on the right, indicates that termites are nested within roaches. To reflect this new hypothesis of relationships under the rank-based system, taxonomy on the right, Termites have been demoted from a separate order to a family of roaches, which results in two types of changes. First, the composition of Blatodia, the roaches, changes to include Isopter, the termites. And this change is necessary to reflect the, the new hypothesis of relationships. Second, the termite clade changes its name from Isoptera to Termitidae. And in addition, all the former termite families are lowered in rank to subfamilies, so they also have to change their names. And all of these name changes, indicated in red, are detrimental to communication given that the composition of the groups remains the same. Fortunately, there's a better way. You'll recall that tree-based methods have spread to most other areas of biology. And some of my research concerns the development of tree-based methods for applying clade names. The basic idea is very simple. Just specify the meaning of the name as its reference to a particular clade. And this can be accomplished in various ways, the three most obvious of which are illustrated here. The important point is that these phylogenetic definitions tie names explicitly to clades, and that a given name is applied to a clade by implementing its definition in the context of a tree. Under this approach, names would no longer be affected by subjective changes in ranks. You can see that in this example, where the name Iguanidae is defined as the smallest clade containing B and C. Under this definition, the fact that the BC clade is ranked as a family on the left, but not on the right, makes no difference to the application of the name, which retains its association with the same clade under both artificial ranking schemes. The tree-based approach also does a better job of preserving the associations between names and clades when ideas about relationships change. 
I've already described how the termite clade and various of its subclades have to change their names under the rank-based approach, middle taxonomy, to accommodate the finding that termites are nested within roaches. Now let's suppose that the original names have been given uh, minimum clade phylogenetic definitions based on the originally included species. If so, the roach clade would again experience a change in hypothesized composition, indicated in blue on the right, since it would now include termites. However, none of the name changes that happened under the rank-based approach would occur. Isoptera and the names of its various subclades would continue to refer to the same clades. Because of these advantages, several colleagues and I have drafted a tree-based alternative to the traditional rank-based codes. Its official name is the International Code of Phylogenetic Nomenclature, though it's commonly referred to as the Philo Code. It contains rules and recommendations about how names are to be defined and applied using tree-based methods. It's been accepted for publication, but publication is being delayed so that it can appear simultaneously with a volume that will fix names to a diversity of clades according to the rules of the Philo Code, provide examples of how to define names for future users, and serve as the official starting point for a tree-based approach to nomenclature. Thank you. The question is, what is the acceptance of the Philo Code across the world of biologists? I think that's uh, actually a really hard thing to gauge. Um, when the initial papers describing the approach first came out, uh, a number of people uh, sort of bought into it. Um, and at, but after that, and, and especially when the Philo Code project got started, a, a more sort of critical and resistant sort of views came to the forefront. And uh, now it's hard to say. The one thing I would say is that with this other volume that's associated, we've gotten quite a large number of biologists from diverse fields to contribute to it. 